Okay, <clears throat> it is December the 20th, 2017, and uh, the project is moving right along. My many thanks to all of you that have made uh, such wonderful suggestions uh, from j just everything. Uh, from sending me uh, two models for the uh, 1626, to layouts, to everything that you've, uh, you've thought of and suggested. Uh, one good gentleman pointed out that my volume control was going to be right under this tube, and it was indeed, so I had to move that over to the left a little bit. I painted this a day ago. I think it's hard, but I'm going to let it dry a little bit longer. Here's the schematic in a nutshell. Maybe every component won't be exactly that, but it's going to be darn close. And of course, I'll toy. I've got a 12BH7 in there now. That was a suggestion. Modeling with that, I'll also try the 12AU7 some medium U triodes. I can drive it up to 2 volts. I can get right at 2 watts output over here. My problem was uh, I was floundering for a couple of days because right here this coupling factor between L1 and L2 between the primary and the secondary of the transformer I had a 0 0.0999 instead of 0.999 so I was off by a factor of 10 and it didn't model very well at all. All I could get out here was milliwatts and microwatts and I just kept thinking I, you know what is wrong with this picture but anyway finally got that figured out <clears throat> and uh, yeah I got some interesting parts here here's a potentiometer I'm going to use it does have an on off switch on it it has four sections which I only need two I got to clean it up a little bit but I've measured it and I'm thinking possibly putting uh, one control right here you know putting this to the to the wiper and, uh, and putting one here and then maybe I'll put the other section right there not, not really sure yet uh, this one right here I'm gonna have to shunt this is a hundred K I'm gonna shunt it with something like oh I don't know maybe a, a 22 K or 27 K something like that I'm gonna put it down here for the for the variable uh, negative feedback I think I mentioned that in the uh, first video a dual pot for that uh, really there's nothing else interesting in here there's just you know I did I did actually go with uh, one of these this will uh, fit in the back of it I started to put just a wire in it but I think it's so much nicer to be able to unplug the, uh, the AC line from it especially when you want to move it around can't think of many other components uh, I had some suggestions of uh, making it symmetrical by putting the transformer in the middle, output transformers on the side. I actually was going to do that at one time when I used, uh, I don't want to scratch the chassis up here, but when I was going to use this transformer right here, that's exactly what I was going to do, an output transformer on each side and, and make it uh, symmetrical, you know, m more like this amplifier right here. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty classic symmetrical design right there, and, and that one performs uh, marvelously. I need to move it out here so I don't break it. But anyway, but when I decided to go with these little guys right here, then, uh, you know, everything changed, and there would be no symmetry anymore. So there you go. Now I'm going to assemble it. I've actually already assembled it. I drilled all the holes. I put it together. I didn't solder anything, of course. I put it completely together and made sure that the everything fit so the next step is give me uh, just a couple of seconds here and uh, I'll put it together well all the major components are mounted um, I already got a scratch there I guess the paint's not really hard yet but anyway I couldn't help but go ahead and decorate it a little bit I've got a lot of knobs I got uh, all these things down here, big stuff, obviously not it. Stuff like off of Tektronix scopes. Must have a two or three thousand. Now, there's actually some really nice ones in there. But um, I think the ones I'm going to use are these, <clears throat> these actual new ones, like for these uh, Fender amps. Marshall amps, excuse me. Either these, these are all brand new. Those are nice looking. Or maybe these, I'm not sure. I don't know, that looks a little plain. 
to me. What do you think? See, the input's right here. I put RCA. I might put some little, the little three and a half millimeter ones too, and a quarter inch phone jack over here. Hmm. This is the fun part, really, I think. Oh, darn it. That was not loose enough. The screw's not loose enough, but that's okay. It gets the picture for that. Maybe that's better, huh? It's hard to say. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, most of these are, are the new stuff. Those are, I think those are too big. That's really classic stuff. Anyway, gotta, gotta play with all that too. Chicken head knobs. So we'll see. Here it is outside in the sun. I think I'm gonna have to let the paint dry. It just doesn't seem to be hard yet. I think it's kind of cute. That's the back of it. Actually, see these little transformers are even made in USA. And so is that choke in there. I don't know if you could read it from there, but it is. I think it's kind of cute. I'm gonna leave those knobs on it for right now. We'll see how it turns out later. <clears throat> I'm almost thinking I'm going to need a, uh, I think you call them DIN plugs over here and over here. One for the input, one for the output. Of course, we know we can have adapters for all that, but uh, I like those little tubes. These guys right here are what really inspired it. Got to do a little bit more modeling and uh, check out that uh, I'm getting all that I can out of it without overdriving them. Nice bright sunny day here, huh? Okay, well let's look at a couple of important things here while the paint dries. These are two separate models. Uh, this one over here on the right is uh, using 12AU7s. One on the left is using 12BH7s. Uh, one of the things I had to do is if you look here, this will probably get blurry, but I'll show you right here. I look in this uh, transmitting tube manual right here, RCA transmitting tubes and for the 1626 and it says that the maximum uh, plate current is 25 milliamps with a plate dissipation of uh, six and a quarter watts. Well with this marvelous little program, let's go over here we can do it in either one, let's do it in this one and uh, if we hold down ALT and click on this, see we get our display up there, I'll just double click on it so that's the only thing that's up there. And then we hold down control, well not yet, we go up here and touch it then hold down control and click on it again and tell us that we're just painting six and a half watts in that tube. Isn't that amazing? Okay, here's another thing we can do. We can double click this. Uh, now, actually I gotta stop it and not run it. Let's see. No, I think that's right. Huh. Thought I could double click it and get the voltage. I get confused there once in a while. Maybe if I do this. There we go. 31 volts. So if you divide 31 volts by my uh, uh, resistor here of 1,000 ohms, uh, you get um, 31, 1,000. Divide, you get about 20 something milliamps. F, 6, 9. You get 21 milliamps. So see, we're not, we're not going to smoke our tube. So that's a good thing, right? We can open that up so it's a, oh yeah, there's the whole thing. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. But anyway, um, I wanted to keep both. And then we can uh, simulate it again. See, am I simulating this one? Yeah, and then we can start looking at power output. Hold down Alt again. And we get that little uh, thermometer over there. We click on it. We'll double click, so that's all I get. Let's, let's just look at the picture of it, what it looks like. Looks pretty good. We can, that's what our sine wave looks like, driving it with one and a half volts over here at a kilohertz. 
and then if we again if we hold out all our control now that we've done that we click on that and it says we're running at 1.06 watts well I can drive it up to about two and a half volts and get uh, right at two watts uh, it starts getting a little a little out of shape here not terrible though I think it's going to be just fine um, I think I've probably spent more time modeling this thing and you click that and you get rid of it uh, right click get rid of your your scissors uh, so this is modeling with a 12BH7, this is modeling with a 12AU7. The difference is ever so slight. Right here, I put down here, final value of the negative feedback components are going to be determined uh, experimentally. And that's what I'm going to do. I've got a 4.7K in it right now and 150 picofarad. Those are just kind of common values. This little output transformer there is absolutely nothing special about it nothing at all you, you can find these little output transformers in just about any piece of old vintage uh, stereo equipment made by Motorola or RCA or who knows you know from the 60s uh, the primary inductance is three and a half Henry's the uh, secondary inductance is 8.5 millihenries if you do that ratio you get like 411 and if you take the square root of that you get 20 so it's a standard little uh, 20 to 1 uh, voltage ratio things that you can uh, easily measure with a voltmeter and you know with a little bit of voltage on it as as uh, myself and others have uh, made several videos on how to measure transformers so you don't have to go into the millihenry and you don't have to go into its inductance values but I did want to know those and if, if you do the math what you find out is if you put 16 ohms out here as a load uh, you get reflected back about 6k which is a good load impedance for this little tube I had to play around. What's so beautiful about this program is you can just start playing around with the values. You're not out there soldering, you know, messing up your stuff, drilling extra holes and making a mess. And uh, you know what the current is, you know what the voltage is, so you know what the bias is, you know how much power is dissipating, you know everything. Marvelous. And all this stuff is free. Can't get enough of it. Let's go with this just a, a, a little bit more, and I'll show you how uh, how you can do do this and, and see things so clearly. We're going to look at the input voltage first. We double click it so that we only have one display. We're just going to look at one because they're they're both so close to the same. It's not worth messing with. You can see that it's going from uh, one and a half volts, plus one and a half volts to minus one and a half volts. That whoops. That number is specified right there in that sign, zero. The zero says it's got DC offset. This is one and a half volts right here, peak at one kilohertz. I'll do a sweep of it here in a minute, but that might take me a second to set it up. But anyway, so we look at the input. There's what our input looks like. Coming out of the first stage is that, nice and clean. The second stage, there it is out of the second stage. I hope you can see that purple uh, going into the grid. It's going to be pretty much the same. It got shifted a little bit because of that capacitor. Coming out of the plate of the uh, 1626 is that swinging between 420 volts up here and 180 volts. Coming right out driving the headphones is is that again. Uh, so there you go. So you can you can you can uh, test your amplifier following it through and uh, making sure that each stage is clean so you know if you start at the output and you say wow it, if it happens to look really awful and trust me it has looked pretty awful in some of the values I've put in here uh, then you just start at the beginning and, and follow it through all the way from input second stage third stage out to the transformer and uh, repair it if you if you say design it however you, however you want to look at it these are pretty common values, 47K, 47K, the kind of values you, you would see in a 12AU7, 12BH7, or even a 6SN7. Uh, the 1626 is a, rare, is a rare little bird. There's not much doubt about that, and it does require some, uh, uh, some tinkering with so that you don't uh, smoke it. Pretty little triode. Um, I think that's it right there. But I just had to show you that, what, what you can do with this. I spent a lot of time with this, and I really enjoy it. Well, it's now uh, December the 21st, 2017, and I've got one channel working. This thing is just as cute as it can be. Let me turn out the light here. See if that works. The two 1625s, you can see. I got a 12BH7 here on the left and a 
12 au 7 on the right. Uh, they actually, actually, the 12 au 7 works better. Let me turn it back. Put the light back up. <clears throat> I've got a bunch of these little guys. There's four, six, eight. So I have eight of them, so you can see why I chose to use them. And this is basically what it looks like. I'm going to uh, continue working. I've got one channel working. And my back is killing me. But um, I think I'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like tonight. Painted the chassis blue. Um, in a nutshell, here's what it looks like at a kilohertz. It works real good down to 40 hertz and up well past 10 kilohertz. I'll have to show you the uh, the way the um, LT Spy shows it, uh, models it next time. There's its power right there, 1.37 watts. There's its THD, 1.2%. And I can just barely touch it right here and lower it just a tiny little bit and it'll drop below 1%. Yeah, 1.18 watts. If we look at its uh, spectral display over here, that's what that looks like. Hum, hum right here is really low, below 100 dB. So it should be really quiet. Sorry about the glare from that uh, light there, but that's its... Uh, one kilohertz and all of its harmonics. Since it's a SE amp, it's going to have a high order second harmonic, and it does. So there you go. <coughs> I did change out this guy right here for a, a single channel little um, Scarlet. This guy right here, focus right, I like that. Anyway, there it is. I got a lot of uh, work to do still. I've got to finish the other channel. I'll turn it off here. I'll show you what it looks like briefly underneath. Don't want to knock my tubes off and be an idiot here. There it is underneath in a nutshell. I have been, uh, as I made a note in one of my uh, drawings, that the, um, the NFB going to be done experimentally and I really did indeed have to do that uh, these little amps like this are pretty special they're not like the 20 and 40 and 100 watt amps that we're used to building the negative feedback resistor is about 1k and that gives me about 3 dB of negative feedback you got to think about that and process that for a while. Typical values are like 16 dB. With 1K NFB resistor, I get about 3 dB. So there you go. For what it's worth, see, this is what I'm using right here, a little decade box. And then I put capacitors across it. And once I get up close to about a 0.1, microfarad it starts getting it starts doing a really strange thing so it doesn't need a, um, a a capacitor across it I've made some notes in here I've got a I've got a change my 300 volts ended up as 275 I changed these to 5.1k and 5.1k and like I say right now I've tested both of these but the 12 I used of it actually works the best and I've been trying different ones and all of my uh, 1626s seem to uh, perform about the same I haven't tested all eight of them but that's it for the nutshell so uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get it done for Christmas or not got a lot of things to do around the house got a lot of honeydews but um, I'll do my best to get it done if I don't then uh, I wish all of you guys that uh, watch my videos the very best. Very best of Merry Christmas and a good New Year. And be safe and God bless you.